you're like my family, we spend a lot of time in the kitchen. So naturally, that's where some of my coolest automations are. I'll show you all of my devices, how I set up my sink to turn on the lights, and how my dishwasher reminds me if I forgot to run the dishes. Welcome back to Future Smart Home. My name is Ben and this channel is all about simplifying your life with smart home technology. As I say in real estate, it's all about the kitchens and the bathrooms. And that's because we spend a lot of our waking hours in both. So let's start with the kitchen and some of my favorite devices that I've used to turn my kitchen into a smart kitchen. This first one is really inexpensive for the value you can get. Smart plugs or smart outlets are a great way to trigger analog devices. You can have them turn on a tea kettle, you can make sure that something is turned off, like a toaster oven, and you can even get alerted when you inevitably forget to turn on the dishwasher at the end of the night. So let me show you how I do this. I have an Acara smart plug underneath our sink, which has a power sensor in it. I've connected this plug to Home Assistant, but you can connect it to other smart home hubs as well. And using the power meter, I can tell when this plug, and therefore the dishwasher, have exceeded a certain threshold. If that happens, it means I ran the dishwasher. If I forgot to run the dishwasher, the threshold isn't exceeded. And at the end of the night, when I press the off button for our house, I get a critical notification. That breaks through all of my focus modes to tell me the dishwasher wasn't run. Now, as someone who frequently forgets to do things, this is a notification that has changed my life. I know that sounds ridiculous, but with two kids and work, if we don't do the dishes at night, completely throws off the morning and the rest of the day. So stick around to the end if you wanna see a detailed walkthrough for how I did this. Smart speakers or smart displays are a really easy way to add some smarts to your kitchen. I personally love the Nest Hub Max, not only because of the photos that it displays of our family, but also the ease of using voice commands for kitchen timers, playing podcasts, and sometimes announcing to the entire house that it's dinner time. Now, you can also use Amazon devices or Apple HomePods. Check out the description for links for all of those. Another really important device is a motion sensor. We have two in our kitchen. One is attached to our security system, but I can use it for automations. And the second is a small Zigbee motion sensor from Acara that detects motion going into our pantry. So this motion sensor from Acara, which is mounted on the top of the door there, is really great for only detecting motion when we walk into the pantry. By the way, I only started this channel about six months ago. So if you love all things smart home, please consider subscribing so you can see more of my videos in the future. Okay, let's talk about smart lights. Since you're going to be coming in and out of your kitchen often, it's a whole lot easier to have some smart lighting. Not only will your lights respond to motion sensor events, but you can use your voice when your hands are wet or you're carrying food. Speaking of wet hands, I even rigged up my sink here to turn on the lights when I pull the hose like this. It's pretty cool. I'm using a car vibration sensor. If you're interested in that, I linked a video somewhere on the screen that talks about exactly how I did that. Now, I prefer smart switches instead of smart light bulbs because turning on and off the switch doesn't accidentally disconnect a smart bulb from your network. We have Lutron switches throughout this kitchen and it makes a huge difference. They're very reliable switches and I'd highly recommend them. Another nice thing to have in a kitchen is a robot vacuum. This one is from Roborock and it is so nice to have the robot automatically clean the kitchen when we take the kids upstairs for bedtime. Using the motion sensor, the robot can know that no one else is in the kitchen anymore, so we'll go ahead and clean. By the time we're back downstairs, all of the crumbs are gone and it just feels magical. And hey, if you wanna know my secret to keeping our robot vacuum completely out of sight and out of mind, I literally haven't seen it for weeks. Take a look at my most recent video. Now let's dive into Home Assistant and I'll show you how I have everything set up. So the first thing, as I mentioned, is having a smart plug with a power threshold meter. So this is our smart plug that we use to check whether the dishwasher is on and off. And as you can see, there's some log books here that indicate when it did turn on and off. Uh, I can see the current electrical measurement, voltage, all sorts of stuff. The threshold sensor is what I wanted to talk about. And this is a really cool sensor. And what it does is it allows you to establish particular thresholds. So let me go back and show you the power meter. So here's our power meter. And you can see that there's a big spike in watts when the dishwasher turns on. So the threshold really just says, has the power meter been above, I believe it's like 50 watts. So if it ever goes above 50 watts, that means with 
a lot of certainty, the dishwasher was turned on. The threshold flips the switch for dishwasher on and this automation pays attention to that. So the trigger for this automation is whether dishwasher on, which again is that threshold meter, whether dishwasher on was on for 30 seconds. So if it has been going for 30 seconds above 50 watts, then it's gonna mark as it being on for the day. And that just calls a simple Boolean switch to turn on, which is our state. And that's the dishwasher ran today state. Now every night, actually every morning at about 5 a.m., I reset all of our states across the house, including this one, which is dishwasher ran today, that goes back to false. So that's the first automation. The second automation is our scene button. So that is the button that I press at the end of the day. It does a lot of other checks. If you wanna take a look at one of my other videos, there's actually a link to it somewhere in this video. It'll go through all these things and specifics. But to talk about the dishwasher, this is what happens if the dishwasher has not run today. So first it checks, hey, did the dishwasher run today? Was that off? If so, is it after? the sun has set. So again, I don't want it to necessarily uh, trigger if it's in the middle of the day and I just wanted to turn all the lights off by pressing off. Then if that does happen, this is where the critical notif notification comes in. So this is a notification send service. And as you can see here, there's a little bit of payload, this payload data, which says critical one. And again, what that does is it busts through all of my focus modes it makes sure that even if I'm on do not disturb, sleep mode, whatever, this notification hits my screen and it shows up as critical, big red flashing sign and it's it, it makes me remember. So that's how this works and hopefully you can try it and help you make sure you run the dishes every night. A couple of other devices to mention, you should definitely have a smoke detector somewhere near your kitchen. And if it's a smart smoke detector, that's even better. Also, I use NFC tags to power a home maintenance reminder system. Includes a lot of kitchen maintenance like cleaning filters and vents and all of that fun stuff. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the future.